Friends, we are at week four and just so excited about this Colossians study. I hope you've enjoyed everything up till now. Um, just really, really excited for this chapter four of Colossians. And uh, it is a whole lot about prayer. No wonder, you know, an apostle as Paul, that when he um, kind of wraps it all together, that he will make certain that there are some key important things that is always important that he also wants to communicate to the church in Colossae, one of them, of course, being the importance of prayer. My wife and I love to do Bible tours. We're doing a Bible tour to Turkey in 2025. Would be awesome if you could join us for that. And we have done several to Israel, to the Holy Land. And here on this camel sits Brother Matt Deeren. Uh, he is a worship pastor here at Cornerstone uh, Christian Missionary Alliance Church in Marion, Ohio. And um, you can see the camel there is about to get up. The funny thing about camels, whether they get up or whether they go down, they are constantly using their knees. And as you can see, their knees takes quite a beating. And therefore, the saying, when you pray, you need to have camel knees. Meaning, when I look at your knees, I need to be able to see that you are a man or a woman of prayer. Um, this is a picture of my dad. My sister caught this picture at some point. He's sitting there at the dining room table where we have had um, so many meals together. He loves flowers. So you go into his garden, you see a whole lot of flowers. You go and visit me at my house here in Marion. Once you're in my street, all you need to look for is the street with the most amount of roses. <laughs> and you, then you will know that's my house. I guess I am a child of my, of my father, um, Nick De Wet. And uh, she caught a picture of him there sitting praying. Not a day has gone by in my life that, um, of course, that I've been in the house <laughs> and my dad did not work uh, overtime in the mine and uh, worked through the night and wasn't home. Every night when he was home, we were home, I would see my dad on his knees. I would see my dad reading from God's word to us. We never skipped devotion time and it was never this odd, weird thing. It was just part of our lives. And therefore, I have come to say this many times uh, to my children, um, to um, teaching sessions. No one says it like God. No one says it like God. And therefore, I pray that you always remember you cannot give greater advice to your kids or your wife or anyone else than what they could read in God's Word. We could also say no one answers. No one answers it. Whatever questions you might have, what, whatever thing you might need to present, nobody answers it like God. Therefore, go with your questions, go with your requests in prayer to God, because nobody answers you like God, and God definitely answers prayer. And so Colossians 4, verses 2 to 4, this is one of these, uh, this final chapter begins with a huge focus on prayer. The, Paul speaks several times in this passage about you need to pray, but then he specifically starts in verse 2 and he says, devote yourselves to prayer. In other words, make certain that prayer is a spiritual discipline in your life. No, no, not just something that you consider to do from time to time or do it when you're a little bit in trouble perhaps or something like that. No, no, no. It is really important that you make the time for it. That's when you do, when you devote yourself to something, right? When you devote yourself to something, it means that you give it priority. 
So if you want to give it priority, it means that you need to make the time for it. You need to remember, you know what? Nobody says it like God. Nobody answers it like God. So devote yourself to it. Make sure that it is a spiritual discipline that gets the time and gets the priority that it deserves. And so I will not a day go by where I don't have devotion with my wife, where I don't encourage my children who is now out of the house to continue with their own devotions. Why? Because I cannot give them the kind of advice that they can get from God. I cannot say it the way that God said. I cannot give them the answers that can change everything in their hearts and their lives as God can. And so Paul knows it. So he continues to encourage the church right here at the end. He says, devote yourselves to prayer, being watchful and thankful. Pray for us too that God may open a door for our message so that we may proclaim the mystery of Christ for which I am in chains. Pray that I may proclaim it clearly as it should. So if we would use this passage and we would look for a minute here at the prayer life um, of Paul, what, what do we see? We see a few things. We see that he says, pray for us too. In other words, I don't only want you to pray for yourself and the needs that you have for yourself. I, I'm asking you that you pray for us too. In other words, I ask you, please pray for other people as well. And, and what, what Paul says, when you think about me, when you think about someone else than just yourself, what are the things that I need you to pray for? And so he says, I, I pray that, that you will pray about these things, that God may open a door for us. O o open a door. Um, and, and, and that door that needs to be opened is what? He says, open a door for our message. Open a door for our message. So it's a spiritual prayer request. It's will you please pray that God will open a door so that we can share the gospel. He says, um, would you please pray that we may proclaim. So once the door is open, <laughs> the next thing that's obviously necessary is that you will walk through this door, that you will proclaim the mystery of Christ. It doesn't help that you pray that God opens a door for us, but we don't walk through the door. We don't speak. He says um, that I may, may proclaim it clearly. He says, will you, will you please pray for us so that when we do bring this message, that we will do it correctly, that we will do it well. It is interesting to me, if you would think about the physical prayer request that he, could, that, 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 that he could have asked for, and you look at the spiritual that he did ask for, there's literally nothing in this side of physical. While we read, I am in chains. Paul is literally, do you remember, when he writes this, in prison. And yet... He's not asking for safety, to be freed, for food, for clothes, for any of these things. He's asking for spiritual things. So may this be a lesson that as we devote ourselves to prayer, that we don't only pray for ourselves, that we don't only pray for all the physical needs, but that we also make certain that we pray for how others can connect with God and how we should connect with God and also for spiritual things in our prayer life. So I thought I would close with a modern day prayer example. This happened um, just this past summer of uh, July 2024. 20, we went to Thailand. Some of you guys um, that are listening to this actually went with us. Um, this lady here, Elizabeth, was with us. This is my wife, Sumeri. Um, I'm, I'm the dude over here. And here is our missionary friend, um, Pastor Ben. And so we have a problem currently in Thailand. 
the church that we built years ago by God's grace is sitting here and this street um, dead ends here. So you, this street cannot go any further. And we just had enough money to buy a small piece of land here. Um, here, is a, here is a street over here in front of the church. Uh, there's actually a little water canal over here. And we ran out of parking. There's only enough space here for four cars over here and perhaps two outside here and we need more parking. So we looked at this option over here and we looked at this option over here, land that's available, but we need to buy that and it's available for, for somewhere around $700,000. Like, well, that's a little bit out of our price range because land in Bangkok is extremely expensive. This land would be perfect. Right next to the church, available about twice the size of the land that the church in Bangkok is on. It would be fantastic to rent that for parking. We will definitely not be able to afford it. But this woman here that owns this land, we have zero contact with her, no way to contact us. And on that land, there's a bunch of roosters. And they're making a big noise. Somebody squatted there on this lady's land. It, they make a big noise, a big mess. They stink. It's irritating us the whole week. So we pray for these options. No special prayer, you know, no special ritual, no special, we're just us standing in a circle. God, you know this is out. You know this is out. You, you, you know that um, this is the best opportunity, but we have no way to contact this person. Will you please make a way? Friends, we come back here and Pastor Ben calls me. He says, um, my friend, I have great news for you. I got a phone call from this lady. She came back to her land. She saw these roosters. They're like, oh my goodness, what is this person doing with my land? She called me, and before I could say anything, she's like, Pastor Ben, do you think you have a need to, um, to rent this land for me, for parking for your church? Because I am so tired of this rooster on my land. Precious friends, devote, devote yourself to prayer. Thank you so much.